All right, guys, new intro here for the Bear Pack. We already crushed a 7K subscriber goal, so we are going to update that board here for you guys. Look at Joe Burrow looking at all these nice, tasty giveaways. We have the 8K sub jersey giveaway. We have the 9K sub sports memorabilia giveaway. 10K subs, the big one, $1,000 giveaway, and the 12K subs. We're going to send a couple people to a game of their choice. Guys, we are very excited for the football season, but no more talking. Let's get right into this video, Trey. All right, guys, let's get into some MLB picks and props for Thursday, September 14th, slate of games. Take a look at that leaderboard, Trey. Start us off. Yeah, and at the moment, I am 1-0 because I gave out a winner yesterday. I gave out the Cleveland Guardians plus a half on the first five-inning run line versus the Giants. And the Guardians, they cashed this bet pretty easily because they actually won the first five. By a score of five to one, we didn't even need the plus a half here. So shout out the Guardians. Seth? Yeah, and I took the Marlins money line in this game against the Brewers with Braxton Garrett on the mound. It's currently zero to zero. So uh, as we're filming, this game is still going on. Yeah, and I am 0-1 today. I had the over 11 and a half run score between the Cubbies and the Colorado Rockies. The day game curse continues for me as they scored 11 in this game and they left 18 people on base. Both teams had double-digit hits, and they couldn't get 12 across home plate. Sucks to suck. Idiot for taking a day game. Let's move on to our plays for tomorrow. Trey, start us off. Yeah, and I'm going to start us off here with this Texas Rangers at Toronto Blue Jays game. And this game should be really fun to watch because we're getting a maybe future AL wildcard matchup here between these two teams. But the Rangers, they are really struggling at the moment, especially on the road. After being dominant all season long, they're 5-5 five and five over their last 10 games. And on the season, they're 35-34 and 34 on the road. And the Blue Jays, they are pretty good at home this season with a 38-32 and 32 record at home. But I expect there to be some runs scored in this game. The total number is eight. I don't really like flat numbers. So I'm going to buy a half run and take it at over seven and a half. It is pretty juiced. So if you don't like the juice, you can just settle for the eight. Because I do think there's going to be a ton of runs scored in this game. This number is just simply too low, especially with these two offenses we have in the batter's box. Because these two teams, they score an average of 10.11 runs per game, which is way over this number. And I do know that the Toronto Blue Jays are throwing out Kevin Gaskosman and the Rangers are throwing out Nathan Uvalde, two really good pitchers. But at the end of the day, rubber will meet the road here and the offenses will win. Give me the over seven and a half total runs in this game of the Rangers versus Blue Jays. I love it, Trey Seth. I will be taking the Giants this one and a half on the run line in this game against the Rockies. We have a lot of good trends on our side for this game. The biggest one is that the Giants are 16 and four against the Rockies over their last 20 meetings. They're absolutely dominant when it comes to playing the Rockies. The Giants also have their best pitcher on the mound in Logan Webb in this game. I don't care that this game is at Coors Field because Logan Webb has a career 8-2 record against the Rockies with a 3.24 ERA. He has dominated them in his career and has dominated them this season as he has only allowed four total runs over 20.1 innings pitched against them. Webb's last start also came against the Rockies where he went six innings allowing only three hits and no runs. He has had a great start to September as well with a 2.13 ERA over 12.2 innings pitched. The Rockies will have Chase Anderson going in this game, and I will start by saying this Rockies team doesn't have a lot of su success when Anderson does pitch. The Rockies have lost eight of the 14 games that Anderson was on the mound. There was a stretch in June that the Rockies lost by a combined score of 53-10 to 10 over three of Chase Anderson's starts. In Anderson's last two starts, the Rockies have lost by a combined 16-6. to 6. As a team... This current Giants roster has a career 283 batting average against him with five players holding OPSs over 1,000. Like I had mentioned earlier, we have a lot of good trends going for us in this matchup. So take the Giants minus one and a half here, and I'm going to go ahead and take the Giants team total over four and a half as well. Yes, yeah, so I like those plays for my play today. I'm going to be looking at the Arizona Diamondbacks going up against the New York Mets. Two really good guys on the mound today for both of these teams. We have Merrill Kelly on the mound for the Dimebacks and Cody Singer on the mound for the New York Mets. I'm going to take the Arizona Dimebacks here on the money line at plus 101. I think they need it more. The Mets are filming out of the playoffs, and the Dimebacks are still fighting for that last spot in the wild card. The matchup on the mound should be very good, but even if Singer is able to give the Mets six innings, it still probably won't be enough. I'm expecting Kelly to be able to go six-plus because he's been very good in his last two games, only giving up two earned runs in those two games combined. He should have had a complete game against the Colorado Rockies two starts ago, but he had some calf cramps. He had to come out of that game. So he's definitely on top of his game right now. I also worry about the New York Mets bullpen. Whenever Singa eventually does come out of this game, they are in a liability, and the Dimebacks should be able to take advantage of that. This is a hungry dog runs faster when it's hungry. Give me the Dimebacks at plus money tomorrow on the money line to go to New York and beat them. Dimebacks on the money line as my play. Guys, go to the player props. Trey, start us off. 
Yeah, and I was 1-0 yesterday on the player props because I gave out Taj Bradley over six and a half strikeouts versus the Twins. And Bradley, he cashed this over for us. He only pitched in four and two-third innings, but piled on the strikeouts like I projected. I call him Spencer Strider Light because he gets lit up, but along that process, he gets strikeouts, and that's exactly what happened because he finished this game with seven strikeouts. So shout out Taj Bradley. Yeah, and also shout out Taj Gibson for cleaning up the board. Seth, what was your play? Yeah, so Arenado decided not to play today, so yeah. we're going to go 0-0 on the day. And uh, Kirby Boyd decided not to play today, so we're going to go 0-0 on the day. So Trey sweeping the board by himself. Look at that. Let's move on to tomorrow. Trey, start us off. God, I'm going to tell my grandkids about this day. But I'm going to be going with Logan Webb here. I know that Seth just talked about him, and he said a lot of glowingly things about him. But I'm going to kind of fade him in this matchup. I'm going to take him over two and a half earned runs allowed versus the Rockies. And I actually really love this over for Webb in this game. He has really struggled to pitch well on the road this season. And he's also pitching in Coors Field, like Seth highlighted earlier. And Webb, he's pitched in 15 road games this season, turned it to a 4-6 and six record with a 4.58 ERA paired to 1.23 whip. And Webb, he's pitched significantly better at home than on the road this season. And thankfully for us, this is game is in Colorado. And Colorado loves to pour on runs whenever they're playing at home, like everyone knows. They average 5.13 runs per game at home this season, which is the eighth highest in the MLB. So give me Logan Webb to get demolitioned in this game. I'm taking him to go over two and a half earned runs allowed versus the Rockies. I like it, Trey Seth. Yeah, and I'm going to go to the offensive side of things for the Giants, and I'm going to take Mike Yastrzemski over one and a half total bases in this game against the Rockies at Coors Field. As I mentioned in the game pick, there are five current Giants that hold OPSs over 1,000 on Chase Anderson, and Yastrzemski happens to be one of them with an OPS of 1.143. He has seen Anderson seven times in his career and has three hits with two of those being doubles. I don't need to get into Anderson because I said everything I needed to in the game pick. Yastrzemski has been really good over his last five games, compiling 10 hits with four doubles and a home run. He has also had three multi-hit games in that span and even sprinkled in a four-hit game against the Rockies and Chase Anderson in last week's matchup. Don't think into this one too much. Anderson has been awful, and the Rockies boast the worst bullpen in the MLB. This game's also at Coors Field. So take Yastrzemski to go over one and a half total bases in this game. Mike Wazowski. Yeah, I like that play as well, Seth. For my prop today, it's going to be Tommy Pham to go over 1.5 base against the New York Mets. The New York Mets keep changing their starting pitching every single day, so I can never get a projected player who's going to pitch. It probably has something to do with how horrible their organization is as a whole. They're a losing franchise who's hit rock bottom, and they don't deserve to be in the MLB at all. Uh, they're supposed to be throwing out Kode Singh tomorrow, and he's pretty good against left-handed hitters, so I'm going to take a righty in Tommy Pham. Tommy Pham has been excellent over the last several games, collecting at least one hit in five consecutive. He also is much better at hitting right-handed pitching, where he has a 278 batting average compared to 245 against lefties. This is a good spot for Tommy Pham to keep on rolling. So give me him here to go over 1.5 bases against a pretty good pitcher in Kode Singa. Guys, that's going to do it for MLB Player Props and Game Picks for Thursday, September 14th, Slate of Games. If you guys enjoyed the content, please sure to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel below. We'll see you guys next video, and thanks for watching. Just want to let everyone know that while we do give out free picks, plays, and predictions on our YouTube channel, we also have a website for you to check out. On our website, bearsprofitplays.com, you can subscribe to the website absolutely free with an email and gain access to our written articles about upcoming sporting events. If you're really looking to make some cash, we have an option to become a member of our website. If you become a member, you will gain access to our locks of the week, which are written articles that go in-depth as to why we are picking that particular outcome. As of now, our member plays have been red hot, hitting over 60% of our plays. If you don't want to become a member, it's no sweat. We are here to try and make you guys some money. That's our main goal. So come on over to bearsprofitplays.com and subscribe for free. Check us out, follow our free picks, and see for yourself that our member plays are a great investment for you. Thanks for watching.